Maybe you did not think Ricky Williams would be a top 15 running back, but he's our star of the week, so you better rethink that. Welcome to Fantasy Football, brought to you by Norton, because every click matters. I'm Lauren Shahadi, alongside Jamie Eisenberg. Ricky Williams is our go-to guy this week, and looking at the schedule, with the exception of week 13, in the coming weeks, looks pretty good. Yeah, you also have that week 17 matchup on That's there. That's far down the road. You didn't say the word money about Ricky Williams. I'm surprised, because he's been money for fantasy owners this year. It's amazing the year that Ricky Williams is having at 32 years old. He was actually the number 52 drafted running back in fantasy football this year behind such names as Jamal Lewis, Leron McLean, Fred Taylor. As we know, he's playing much better than all those guys. He's actually the number 11 running back this week, coming into this week. He's actually eight points behind Ronnie Brown. Now, Lauren, I love both these guys this week. Ronnie Brown's going to be a fantastic fantasy option, and so is Ricky Williams. The Bucks terrible against the run, as we know. They've actually allowed twice two running backs in the same game to have double digits in fantasy points. It was the Giants with Brandon Jacobs and Maude Bradshaw and the Panthers with D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart. I think you'll see both guys, Brown Williams, have fantastic performances this week. Start them both. You love them. You do not love, do love MSW. Them. Mike Sims Walker this week, 147 yards in week nine. Why sit him? Well, his name is Darrell Rivas, and that's the guy that Sims Walker is going to be facing. So I think the man with three names and the great hyphen there is going to struggle this week. He's been a fantastic fantasy football player all season long. I'm going to stop saying the word fantastic because that's at least three times. you got to look at Sims Walker and just the way that he's played. On the road, terrible. At home, great. His last game on the road was at Tennessee. Two catches for nine yards. Not going to get it done, and I think you'll see him struggle again this week. Now, the thing about Darrell Rivas, Lauren, is it's interesting because against Andre Johnson, Randy Moss, Marcus Colson, three pretty good names, right? Yep. Darrell Rivas has shut those guys down, and I think he's going to shut down Sims Walker. The Jets have been so good against opposing wide receivers, and David Garrard, no touchdowns on the road this year. So no Mike Sims Walker. Well, who do you look to? Maybe Calvin Johnson. You told me yesterday, Lauren, don't worry about the knee. Don't worry about the conflict with Matthew Stafford. Do fantasy owners worry about anything? Yeah, don't worry about the Vikings' pass defense either. They've been very good. But Antoine Winfield, if he doesn't play in this game, that's a big key. And I think you got to keep an eye on what Winfield's going to be facing. And Calvin Johnson, great history against the Vikings. He's played them five times. He's got four touchdowns, including his only touchdown this year, which was against the Vikings earlier this season. I think he bounces back with a big game. You always like when the quarterback and wide receiver, you know, they start to have these little issues. They usually come back the next game. Stafford's going to force him the ball. Now Stafford's going to be running for his life, but we can probably anticipate that the Lions will be behind in this game. That should allow Calvin Johnson to catch some passes, catch a touchdown. I think he's good for double digits and fantasy points. Derek Mason, Jericho Cotri on this list also. Both good starts. Mason, great game against the Browns earlier this year. And Cotri has at least 70 yards receiving in every game that he's been healthy. And this is a great matchup because Jacksonville, they struggle against opposing wide receivers. Jamie, I have a question for you. Mike sure. Sims Walker or Dwayne Bowe? Neither? neither this week if you can afford uh, afford to sit both but if you have to play one is Dwayne Bowe even though as you'll see we don't like him very much why don't we like him well you're talking about another good cornerback facing a good wide receiver and that's Namdi Asamoa facing Dwayne Bowe now Bowe has faced uh, the Raiders five times in his career has only one touchdown it was earlier this year against the Raiders but I think you'll see Matt Castle spread the ball around a little bit they did get Chris Chambers last week. He had the two touchdowns. Lance Long is a young wide receiver that they like. They got him 11 targets last week. So I think you'll see just with the ball being spread around, Dwayne Bowe dealing with Namdi Asamoah. Matt Castle is going to struggle. He should also be considered a sit quarterback this week. I just would stay away from Bowe if you can. The projections here are probably a little bit too high. We should probably revisit that. Nate Burleson, terrible on the road. No touchdowns on the road this year. And your friend Santana Moss is probably going to be dealing with another good cornerback in Champ Bailey, and the Broncos have been very good against opposing right. wide receivers. What about your boy, Brett Favre? Don't have to deal with the injuries. Do you think he might not pass as much because he doesn't need to against Detroit, or what are we looking for I, with I think, numbers? I think you said it right. He probably isn't going to pass very much, especially dealing with some injuries coming into this game. Uh, and that's why you see his projections here probably a little bit too low. But in the first matchup against the Lions, he passed for 155 yards and two touchdowns. That's 18 fantasy points. That's very solid production. You could start him and get away with that. Joe Flacco, great matchup against Cleveland. He bounces back. And Ben Roethlisberger keeps this going. I don't think anything's going to slow him down at this point. He did have a decent game against the Bengals earlier this year. Only one passing touchdown, but he rushed for a touchdown. Great history against the Bengals, and the Bengals secondary is their one weakness. We were mentioning injuries with Brett Favre. What about mentioning injuries when it comes to Hasselback? Goodness gracious, they've just plagued him all season long, last season, the season before. What do we do with him? Are we is he stable enough to trust? Well, Lauren, let's go back a couple of weeks because let's you and I back. sat here and we said that Matt money. Hasselbeck <laughs> was money. Also exactly. Said that. We said that Matt Hasselbeck was money because he was the start of the week in his last matchup against the Cardinals. And I've been crying about it ever since because he had that terrible game with 112 yards passing, 
no touchdowns, an interception, and a fumble, zero fantasy points. So I apologize once again for letting you're you down. You're not the only one crying. With Matt Hasselbeck. Yes, it was a horrible performance, and so I've learned my lesson. He's facing a Cardinals defense that has been suspect against the pass. Hasselbeck has not been good on the road. Cardinals coming off a game where they allowed 369 passing yards, three touchdowns, one interception to Jay Cutler, but I don't think Hasselbeck with that offensive line with the shoulder injury, I'm glad you brought that up because he got the rib problem and now the shoulder injury, I think Hasselbeck's going to struggle again. Garrard on the road and Palmer against the Steelers. With Troy Palomalu back, the Steelers defense is starting Forget to look real it. nice. Forget about it, yes. Yeah. Tim Hightower, losing carries to Beanie Wells. Why are we not losing confidence in him as a fantasy owner? Because surprisingly, even though he's not getting you a lot of yards and the fact that Wells is starting to play well a little bit, two mm -hmm. of his last three games he's had some decent yardage, I still think Tim Hightower is a great fantasy option. You look at the way that he just finds the end zone, he's a great option in leagues where receptions count, and he's facing a Seattle team that is suspect against running backs, catching the ball out of the backfield, and just guys who score. Uh, he scored against them earlier this year. He's been good for double digits in fantasy points most weeks. I love Tim Hightower, just been a fantastic, solid option. Definitely guy you could pencil in as a number two fantasy running back. Again, we'll talk about Jamal Charles, it seems like, almost every week, but I love the matchup against the Raiders. They're just not very good. And even Larry Johnson, our good friend Larry Johnson, yes. who Dave is in love with. He is, but Larry, you're not. I am not, but Larry Johnson, in the game against the Raiders earlier this year, had double digits in fantasy points. Charles can do the same thing. Okay, what about LaDainian Tomlinson dealing with that hip injury? Is that the reason he struggled against the Giants, rather? Is that going to continue? What are, where are we at with him? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned his injury because it's just the top of everything that's just been plaguing him this year. Is it going to be his last season with the Chargers? I think so. I think it's, it's just just sad to sort of talk about LaDainian Tomlinson in this light. You know, he's been such a fantastic fantasy option. We love him. Everybody loves him. But I think it's just his time is done. At 30 years old, he's starting to look his age. He doesn't have the burst. Phillip Rivers has made this a passing team. And he's only got touchdowns against one team. It's the Oakland Raiders, which seems to be everybody can run against the Raiders. He's got one game with 100 total yards. The Eagles have yet to allow a 100-yard rusher. They've only given up 100 total yards to one running back, and that was Brandon Jacobs. I just don't see LT playing well here. Again, looking at his projections, it's probably something we should lower. I don't think he's going to score a touchdown here. Kevin Smith, bad history against the Vikings. No touchdowns against them. And then Marion Barber, as we talked about last week, just not getting it done. He's getting the yards are okay. He had 70 total yards last week. But he's not finding the end zone, and he's got three games in his last four without reaching double digits in fantasy points. That's not helping people. It is just not happening for them. It is happening for you. I'll tell you what's happening. Sunday, 11 o'clock for two hours. Fantasy football today. Be sure to watch it. For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you soon.